um, the one on my left, the woven, we're talking about knit material. So this is what we're talking about when we have sweaters. And these are the type of materials that I like to take apart because when we take these apart, um, you see here, you have the course and the whale and this, the way these are made, they go back and forth. And so I can get a long continuous yarn from taking these apart instead of uh, just short lengths that I then have to tie it together. So the definition um, that I found for knit fabric is that it's a process of taking interlooping yarns together and we are making a woven fabric with this. Uh, so then the, um, those sections are, take, are take, um, put together into uh, the sweater. So to find these uh, fabrics or the sweaters, um, you can go to your closet, you can go to your friend's closet, it's a great place to find them is your friend's closet. Uh, I like going to my second chance store. There's a great one here in the town next to me. Uh, the way it works, they call it an outlet. And the way it works is that on Thursday, you go in and everything's $2. And when you go in Friday, it's $1.75. By the time you get to Wednesday morning, everything's a quarter. So I can go in and I can find sweaters that have, you know, really nice rabbit hair in them or cashmere, uh, really great cottons and linens. And uh, I'm not uh, spending an arm and a leg for these when I wanna take them apart, just in case they don't come apart really easy. So I really enjoy this uh, second chance store that's near me. I like going in there and um, searching through everything. So uh, there's other online markets you can search for sweaters, uh, other resale stores, uh, but there's a great opportunity out there to uh, find uh, for, uh, for these items. So what to look for. So when you're going to your, um, whether it's your friend's closet or your second chance store, the first thing I look for is actually size. Because the bigger it is, the more yarn you're gonna have at the end. So I go to the men's section to start with. I get some really nice extra large, extra, extra large, and uh, I have a really great sweater that's gonna give me a lot of yarns. And the next I look for is fiber content. So as I said, this one, um, let's see. So where's my label here? So you can see here the label, let's see. I don't know, um, don't know if you can see that, but this label, as I said, it was cotton, nylon and cashmere. And so I look at my labels to determine fiber content because I enjoy knitting with natural fibers. If it's a small bit of synthetic in there, um, I'm okay with that. I can, um, sometimes you can actually remove the, if it has like a nylon extra yarn in there, you can actually remove that and then you're left with a completely all natural fiber. But um, I mainly like to look at natural fibers, cotton, linen, uh, going into wools, rabbit hair, cashmere, uh, get some really interesting yarns that way. So the next I look for is fabric construction. Uh, so we're looking for our knit fabric and you're wanting it to um, try and stay away from ones that have like supplemental wefts, which would be this one. So this one, it's a 55% Raimi, 45% cotton. And when I looked at this, I really liked the pattern of this. But then I started looking at it when I tried to take it apart and it has all kinds of supplemental yards on the back. And so this one is not going to uh, be able to take apart like I thought it was. I'm going to end up doing something else with that fabric. So you're wanting ones that are mainly just the knit fabric um, as unadorned as you can so that you're not left with a whole bunch of different yarns that you're trying to take apart at one time. Uh, style would be the next thing you look at. So size and then fiber content and the method of how it's made and then style. So you're wanting more of a pullover sweater. Well, this will be easier to take apart. So you have your, just your sleeve and it's a full pullover. 
that is more easier. That's a lot easier to take apart than uh, something that's a cardigan, which like this that has the button down the sides. Uh, now you can do these, but you have to look at the fabric method of that. Um, but your pullovers will be the ones that take apart, that you can take apart the easiest. And then the last to look at is your brands. Now, some brands use a lot more natural fibers than others. And I have found brands like Gap, Old Navy, um, they really use a lot of nat more natural fibers than some of the other brands. So try to avoid when you're looking at these sweaters in your second chance store, you want to try and avoid things that have zippers down the front because when they sew that zipper in there, they actually will either sew it in or overcast it in and they can cut the thread. So now you're left with a whole section of it that is not usable because it's gonna have short threads on it. Uh, Velcro, um, overstitch seams, which, um, let me see. So this is a sweater. It's, I'm gonna find the label here. You can see, um, not seeing the label. Anyways, it's a cotton and I looked at it. Someone gave it to me. I was like, oh, great. This is a really nice cotton sweater. But then when I start, went to take it apart, this side seam here, it's an overcast seam. They've, they've gone in and they've surged this seam. And this is not, I can already see that there's no point in me trying to take this apart because it has been cut when they over, when they surged it, it was cut. So um, I'm gonna have to come up with something else for this nice cotton sweater as I'm not able to take it apart in a full, uh, full yarn. So you do need to look at your side seams uh, when you take these apart. Uh, something like this that's along the top seam. This, they've added a, a plastic underneath when they've stitched it down. And since this is right at the top seam, I'm okay with this as I can just cut off this little bit and I'm not losing anything. But your side seam, this is the important here, is you have a full side seam here that has not been overcast. So the yarns, they've gone back and forth and it's a smooth, so when you take this apart, you don't have any cut edges there. And we'll get into that in just a little bit. So uh, when you have your sweater, they will come um, and uh, the label is important uh, for this. And you'll have labels at the neck. You'll have labels down the side. You can see this, someone went ahead and cut off this one previously, but I have my fiber content. So labeling regulations here in the US, all garments have to have a label on them. And they have to have your fiber content uh, listed on it. And it can either be at the back of the neck or it'll be down at the side seam. It just depends on the company where they put it. But your fiber content has to be listed on there. One of the things I wanted to highlight on this screen was that um, any concentration of the fiber less than 5% does not have to be listed. So you may, when you're taking your sweaters apart, run across, it'll say 100% cotton or 100% wool. And then you're taking it apart and all of a sudden down at the um, cuffs, you come across a nylon thread. So I have that happen to me a lot uh, is because the lower than 5%, they don't have to list it. So you can run into all kinds of interesting things. So uh, it will need to say country of origin. Uh, on it, whether it's manufactured here in the U.S., um, uh, made in the U.S. and inv of imported goods, or completely ma manufactured here in the U.S., it will say on there. It will give your washing care instructions, which is very important. Uh, because one of the first things I do once I bring home my sweaters from my ch second chance store is I wash them. Uh, it will also have aspects of the manufacturer's identification uh, and label placement. As I said, they'll be at the back of the neck or down on the side seams. Or if it's a skirt, it could be at the center back 
It could be um, further down, it could be in the center of the side seam. So, but there will be labels on your garments if they have not been cut off previously. Uh, there will be labels on the garments telling you your the name, the manufacturer, the fiber content, it'll give you your uh, washing instructions. So these are all important to look for when you're going into your second chance store. One of the things I like to do when I'm going in the store is I go down the aisles and I'll pull a sweater and I'll play a game with myself saying, okay, what is the fiber content of this? And so I kind of guess before I even start looking at the label and try and uh, guess what the fiber might be to see how off I may be with trying to identify what the fiber is in these. So I'll go through, I'll look at them. And if the fiber content is more than 45% uh, synthetic, uh, I won't get it unless it's an extremely interesting fiber to me. So um, this is one here. Uh, this one was a sweater and it is 31% nylon, 28% wool, 21% mohair, and 20% acrylic. And you can see it's a nice orange color. Uh, it's got a great halo to it. It's a, um, a two strand. Normally I would not do this uh, because of so much synthetic, but I thought it would make, you know, it was a really great uh, yarn to, to be able to upcycle it into something else. So normally I, stay with just full um, uh, full natural fibers or very little synthetic in it. So also um, labeling requirements for adults and kids, they are the same. So um, whenever you go into the store, any of the clothes, they should all be the same. So one more survey here. Wanted to get you guys um, your opinion. What's your favorite fiber? So is it animal, plant, synthetic? Are we talking about wool, cotton, hemp, synthetic polyesters? So, uh, Mary, do you have that? Yep, I put it up. So okay. we have 65% wool, 15% alpaca, 5% silk, and nobody voted for hemp, angora, or mohair, and I don't have any others. So, oh, 14% other. Oh, okay. So, um, well, if you've not tried hemp before, you should really try it. I love knitting and spinning hemp. So that'll be another workshop for another time for us to talk about hemp. So labels, and I put this in just uh, so you can see what some of the various labels that you may come across on uh, your sweater. So I do, as I said, first thing I do when I get my sweaters from my second chance store is I wash them. And I wash according to the label using a plant-based detergent. Uh, and I do this um, and then I hang them to dry. But I do this because they're coming from outside and I'm bringing them into my studio. And just in case there might be anything in there, I want to make sure I'm not attracting insects into my studio as well as when I'm taking these apart. I don't know how they were previously housed. So I'm making sure that um, I'm bringing in these being as safe, to, as safe as I can with working with them. So the next step is to take your sweater and turn it inside out. So here's the sweater as an example. I've already started to take off one of the uh, sleeves. So for this one, we have a sleeve. And we have a front, a back. So you'll have two sleeves, a front and a back. So that's four uh, skeins. And then you have, this one has a little bit of a rib at the neck. And I'm not going to be able to get much out of this rib. So I either will add it to the end of one of the other skeins, or I may just wind it off and use it as thread for something else. It's gonna depend on how this comes apart. So when we do this, you want to find your bind off. So we have our side seam here. When I start, I actually like to start on the side seams. Take the side seam and uh, through the sleeve. It'll usually go the way, usually these are made so that it'll start at a cuff on a sleeve and one um, continuous uh, seam will go all the way down to the bottom of the side seam. So, um, 
Okay, so I don't know if you can see the close up of what I tried to do for the chain. So these side seams, the way this is put together, they're sewn with this chain stitch. And you can see, so the chain stitch, you want to find the chain stitch and look at which way it's going. So either going with the whale and the loop up or the loop down. You want to make sure that when you're looking at this, your orientation is for the loop up. And so we take that, we'll find where it's bound off. You can see a little bit of a tail here, and that's where we start to unravel. So, and you start at the top and you can just pull, making sure your chains with the loop up and you'll be able to pull all the way undone here until we get to our label. And then because this is sewn in, you're gonna to need to unstitch these to take them off. And then this will continue all the way down. So now you have taken apart the side seam and you've got two completely new pieces without having to cut your seam at all. So now uh, we have a clean edge here. And when we unravel this, we're gonna get a nice long continuous yarn. And one of the things you do need to make sure when you're looking at that is the orientation is that your picture of that, um, the picture you're seeing here of the course and the whale, uh, it's in the same orientation as your sweater. Now I've come across mainly, most of the time the sweaters are in this orientation, but I have come across where the, um, the uh, knitting has been turned sideways or on the bias uh, to go along with what the designer wanted of that sweater for the look. So you do need to make sure you look at your orientation so that when you take these apart, the loops are at the top and it makes it easy to unravel. So, um, so here's one that I took apart. I started this, this brown one here, it's 100% cotton. Here's my label. So it's 100% cotton and you can see started with the sweater it's it was an extra it's a large so a lot of yarn on this it's got the two sleeves and it has a neck cowl on it uh, it's got an interesting design on it so I was wondering how this would unravel so I tried this one I was able to get it apart into a front and back got two sleeves and then you've got this little bit at the neck and um, you can see I keep my scrap yarns as well. And what I do with those is I take all my scrap yarns and I wind them off onto a card with my fiber content. And now I've got sewing thread. So I keep all of these um, labeled so that I can use these in various other projects. So um, anything that winds off that, uh, um, is too short, I feel, to just tie back on to my yarn, and I keep all of my thread, and that's what that little bit is down there. And make sure you keep your labels, it's really important. So, okay, so we have the sweater, and um, do we want to take a break right now, Mary, or keep going? I don't know, everybody, do you need a break yet? Let's keep going for a little bit. Okay, so sweater. Now there's various ways to unwind the sweater. Um, if I am just sitting on the couch, taking a sweater apart, I'll sit there and I'll wind it off into a ball. It just makes it easier, just have it in my lap, uh, sit there and to look at whatever might be on the screen or listen to music. And as I unravel these, take them and just wind them into the ball. So, or I have this, this is a 10 ounce skein winder. And um, so I have this attached to the table. So let's see. Okay, so here's my sleeve from this cotton piece. And we can see the pattern. My um, whales and courses, they're going in the right direction. So we start at the top. I can see that I have some bind-ons up here. This is where it started from. And you wanna look and um, let's see if we can pull this out so we can get started. There we go. So you have to find the little end and pull that out. And I try to stay away from scissors as much as I can because as um, careful as you can be 
you can still clip these threads and then you're gonna have a break in your yard. So we want to start the end looking at the top of the crochet chain here. Let's see. Okay, I think I just... Okay, so we've got our, and we want to unravel it, get started. So start this and just go a little bit to unravel it. And this is coming apart really easy. So, and um, so I did, this is the one sleeve and the neckline, neck cowl. Um, that I've put together already here. And then I'm adding the next sleeve to this so um, I can get a nice ball of yarn. Melanie, two questions. Mm -hmm. One is a friend gave me several cashmere sweaters, but they're very fine yarn. I have usually chosen looser knits. There's no question here, but I'm assuming it's do you have hints for cashmere and mohair? Because I've heard that before. Uh, yes, the next one I'll show is um, one that has a lot of cashmere in it. And so the next setup of way that I've done this, um, I'll talk about the, the yarn. See, this one is a cotton. And so I'm okay with going fast on this ball winder with it because it's, I know it's a strong fiber and it's not gonna break um, as easy on me. So. And as you move from segment to segment, are you joining the yarn or do you just wind it on and join it later? No, I join it and I mark down how many joins I have. So I know that I had two pieces with the neck and this is the second arm. So that's four joins. And, and what kind of join do you do? Uh, just a knot. Uh, because it depends to me, I just put it on with a, with a knot. Uh, and then um, I can come back later and join it correctly, depending on where I am in my project, or uh, I just make a simple knot so that um, it's not too hard to undo, and then you can do it properly based on based on your project. So you can see this is coming, just unraveling, just really easy. Um, it's a nice cotton. Uh, wools, you may not be able to do this with so much because the hair of the wool uh, fiber, it may um, have become matted uh, in some of the wash, and so it may not come apart as easy as this, but this is a nice 100% cotton, and it's just unraveling right off. You don't want to go too fast as it could could break um, but enough And even with all these various patterns that are in this sweater, um, the different herringbones, the different um, design patterns they have, this is coming apart really nicely.
me just finish this off and then we'll move on to the next one. And there's a question here. Can you unravel sweaters made with very fine yarn and then ply it for something more usable? Sure, I see no problem with that. Um, and we'll talk, the next sweater that I'm gonna pull out actually is one, it's a um, four strand, but to unravel it, it's coming out um, in two strands of two. So um, I was hoping that the yarn would be a nice um, DK weight or something like that, but it's gonna actually end up being a lace weight that uh, then um, if I wanted to knit with both of them, I'd hold, have to hold the two strands together. So you can see this one actually, it's a three strand of a two ply. So. I got all the way off. There's, looks like right here, there was a break. Um, so just pull that off. And then I have a, now I have a nice big cake of cotton. Now I do uh, sell these. So I will actually, to sell this, I will actually take this skein and wind it into a skein. So then I can track my yardage and on my label, when I do my labels here, I will put, I'll put my orig the original label from uh, that was on the sweater. And then I write down the fiber content. I will weigh it. This one I haven't weighed yet, but I'll put how much it weighs and how many yardage I get from, and I'll even put um, that I had the four knots on here. This one came off as one continuous strand. So I don't have that on there, but I will, to sell this, I will take this and rescan it. And can you give us just a little um, a reminder on how and where you started the unraveling? That was a little unclear to a few people. And then are you going to talk a little bit about over dyeing at the end? Uh, I can. Let's see how much time we have. Um, so. OK, so um, what was the first question? So um, just on the next one, show us a little more detail about how and where to start the unraveling. And did you cut to get there? Um, so, um, to start the unraveling, um, uh, if we look at this screen, I want to start at the top of my sleeve. Um, let's see. So see if we can do this one. So this is our uh, fiber content on this one was um, cotton, nylon, and cashmere. So we have the top of, came off with the sweater. So I start up here at the top edge of the sweater. You can tell this will be your cuff and that's the bottom and you'll start up here at the top. And so you need to find um, the bind off end, which usually is just a long crocheted in and it'll be woven into the knit. This one's already been started. Um, let's see if I can find, uh, do I have one here that hasn't been started? Let's see. So, so I don't know if you can see here, but there's the bind off in here. It's been tucked up in the weave. And it's been tucked up in the weave. And then you need to, um, it's like unraveling a chain stitch if you crochet. Okay, for those of us who are a little less patient, do you ever use a seam ripper to get it started? Yeah, you can you can start with scissors. Um, and do you have a list of tools you use? Uh, well, um, these come apart, you know, so that one just, you know, it unwound once I found the, the mind off. They, they come apart um, just on your own. If you uh, take them apart in the correct direction, they come apart and you shouldn't have um, to, you know, have any uh, scissors or anything uh, to take them apart. Uh, now you may, you'll need um, scissors or a seam ripper to undo the stitching here. Um, and you may come across where you need, um, well, the various, I had the ball winder and then 
I also use, let's see if I can pull this one. So this is a tabletop. So this is just a tabletop skein winder I've, I got off the internet. And so this is, um, so this is a, was a nice, let's see, nice sweater here that the contents of it are, ah, there they are. The contents on this one are at the neckline. So this is a crew cut and it's a size 12. It's 100% cashmere made in China. So my label's at the center back. So this one, so it's 100% cashmere. And so I took the sleeve off just to see how this would do. So I started this to see if I was gonna come across anything else. But what I found as this was unraveling, it is a, so it's a four ply of, it's a four strand, four strand of a two ply. And so the way this is actually coming off is two of the two strands are coming off at different rates and not coming off together at the same time. So what I do, I either take it and then I will just pull the whole thing apart with two huge piles on the side of me and then wind them back up or for something like this where I feel that those piles may become matted and then I just have a huge mess of yarn or my dog's gonna run by and mess, you know, step in the pile and then it's really a mess. Um, so there's a question do... here about kinks. What do you do about kinks in the strands? Now, I'm assuming you just kind of stretch them and go by, but I um, think- I'll the... talk about finishing in a moment. Okay, and then the other question is, mm -hmm. Do we have to skein wind it the second time or can we just do it to a ball? And my answer is, I think the only reason you skein wind it is so you can measure your yardage because you resell it. If you weren't gonna right. do that, you could just put it on your ball, on the ball winder. Right, because I resell this. Uh, it's one of the things I, I think it's important when people look, um, when they're coming to my store and looking at the reclaimed yarn is to know how much yardage I have in case they need to use it for a certain um, project, they'll be able to tell from that. So that's why I take it and I rescan is so that I um, can measure my yardage. So this, the 100% cashmere, as you can see here, it's coming off into two strands of two plies. And because this is cashmere, I, and, um, I felt that it would be really easy to break this. I didn't want to do it on my, uh, this, the ball winder. So I have just this tabletop and I slowly, I've got this. So I've got just some clips here to hold the two different skeins to um, up the, the strands apart. And so I'll just go through and they are coming off at different rates, the two different strands. And you can see this one, let's see. Yeah, so this, there was already, it's already a break in the yarn. So I'm gonna need to tie back on. And you'll have to be careful with your animal fibers more than your um, plant fibers. You'll find uh, that you didn't notice any um, like moth holes when you bought it, but after you've washed it or started to play with it, that you do run across the moth holes. And it's just something that you'll uh, need to be prepared for with your fibers because um, they have been used before and you don't know what type of environment, how they were cared for. So, okay. And here's a question. Um, is there a big market for reclaimed yarn? Um, I, I, I sell, um, you know, this, the, the yarn online and a lot of people, um, uh, find that they like making new projects out of it. Uh, the word environment and, you know, all that, those are our big concerns for people these days. And everyone, you know, says, you know, they hope to be able to do their part. And one of the ways to do that is to, you know, use, to upcycle this yarn into something else. Um, now, I don't want 
all of you that are on to go out and start your own shop to do, you know, selling reclaimed yarn, because then we'll have, uh, it'll flood the market. But um, I, I do find that I have, and I have some, you know, um, people that follow me and they request going, you know, they'll come and they're like, I have a project. Do you have anything that has linen in it? I really want to knit this and I think it would look great with linen. So I'll show them, you know, what I have that has that fiber content and, um, or I can say, no, hold on. Uh, let me run to the store, see what I can find and I'll be with you. And here's a question from the Netherlands. Hi. Uh, do you look for handmade sweaters or are factory made also easy to take apart? I look for more of the factory made because then it's going to have the fiber content and all the labels attached to it. Handmade yarns are not going to have those from what I have come across. I have not found a handmade yarn or handmade sweater that had a label with the fiber content, wash content and everything not attached to it. So because I'm selling these for uh, to reuse, uh, um, selling them on my site for other people. I want to make sure that I have the fiber content um, in there for them. Some people are allergic to animal fiber, so you know they they may be looking for just you know things that are just plant based, and so or a vice versa or whatever. And so it's good to um, you know to have that fiber content. So you can see with this cashmere to take it apart, it's coming apart fairly easy but I am taking my time with it so that I don't break the yarn because I already had the one tie on and this is just the sleeve but you can see just using this it is coming apart well and so I'm going to get a lot of nice uh, yarn with this now this isn't my favorite color um, I, I'm not a big uh, yellow green citron fan. So um, because this is cashmere and I know the fiber content, I can over dye it. I could, this would be great over dyed with some indigo. Um, we get a nice um, blue green with it. Could I over dye it with uh, some cochineal and get some, um, I don't know, maybe some peachy colors with it or something um, on the yellow side. So there's all kinds of things you could do with this. So, whoops, okay. Um, I think I uh, think you hit a limit on your iPad or something. Why? Okay. Um, where's my? There we go. Okay. So, um, so yeah. So cashmere wools, I they can be done you will need to take just a little more time with them and your setup so that you can get them apart without a lot of tie-ons. So were there any other questions about, about the, the cashmere? Did that answer that it can be done? So you can see, so this is just a tabletop um, yarn winder and I've got just some clips here just to hold the two different skeins together. And I could keep going with this. So, but one thing you wanna make sure that when you do is that you, um, when you uh, pull the sections apart that you don't clip your, your seams here. Cause once you, if you clip a seam down in here you'll be unable to untie, unravel all the way to get to this point and then you're gonna have a tie on and then you will have, you'll be able to continue on. But um, I find that the longer and the more continuous of a thread yarn that I can come up with, uh, the better I can do and uh, it'll resell. So uh, the next sweater that I wanted to talk about, we have any other questions before we move on to this one? No, no questions right now. I think everybody, including myself, is kind of afraid of mohair and cashmere. And I come at that from a weaver standpoint because weaving with those, particularly if you use them as warp, can be really difficult. So. I can understand well, why it's the way kind of that scary. One, the way that one was coming off, um, the same thing with this green. So this is a cotton and it's coming off the same thing with its 
So you can see that's coming off at two different times. So uh, now you've got a really nice, this is a three strand two ply, but you could take this and mix it with your cashmere and then you've got a dye them at the same time. Uh, but now you've got a cotton and cashmere yarn that you're putting together. So you could take them, dye them. You could even then uh, uh, re-spin them into a new yarn. Uh, so there's, you can get all kinds of new yarns, plies with this by unraveling this, by taking it and darting with the yarn. Um, you can hold them together when you knit, you got two yarns, you could take them to your spinning wheel, spin you, um, the two strands together and you get a whole new yarn, you could dye them. So all kinds of different things you can do with these. So, so somebody uh, asked, Melanie, mm -hmm. if you uh, avoid single ply fine yarn, my suspicion is you don't find many sweaters made out of single ply. Uh, no, but this is one. So this is a linen viscose. It's 55% linen, 45% viscose. Uh, I was able to get it off um, the back off into 3,664 yards. And the back came off in just one continuous yarn. Um, and you can, I don't know if you can see this. This is even smaller than lace weight. It's like cobweb. And it is a I'm not even sure if I can see this. I think it's a two ply. It's a one strand two ply, but it's it's cobweb lace. And so, but you can see it comes off nice. Um, now this, it is, um, I got it because it's, it's, uh, it's got a high, high linen in it. And um, uh, I have a project that calls for cobweb lace. And so this will be great. I'm going to take this all apart on, um, to skein all of these up, uh, over dye this and use this in my project. Now, these would be great when you have your, like this is to maybe do core spinning and if this is your wrapping yarn. Um, you could add this to all kinds of different things. But yeah, so this is a really, you can see, um, nice piece of, it was a linen sweater and uh, take, so it does come apart. Uh, I, Do you have um, any of your over dyed yarns you can show us handy? Um, I don't think so. I after I can run in the back in a moment and well, uh, you guys can always um, check on her store. She has beautiful over dyed yarn. So, um, okay, so the next picture on the PowerPoint I wanted to show you. Uh, it is a so your I'm PowerPoint can't, went off. Um, there. Okay. Is it still there? No. Um, no. You have to share screen again to get it. Mm. I thought maybe it ended it. You got a beep and then it popped off. So I thought maybe it auto ended. Let's see. Okay. Share, share screen. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, I think I may have hit it with the. Oh, yeah, you're back up. There you go. Okay, Perfect. so PowerPoint here. Um, so you can see this. This is a. Um, it's an eighty percent cotton, uh, ten, ten nylon, ten angora rabbit hair. So I thought it was going to be an interesting fiber content. Um, now it is a cardigan, and I wanted to see if. Um, uh, I wanted to see with this cardigan, could I get the cardigan apart? Normally I do just jumpers because uh, they come apart into the four or five pieces and it's really easy to take them apart. But I wanted this cardigan to uh, see if I could take this and pull it apart. So um, it actually came apart into a whole bunch of pieces, little pieces, but this is the center front of the cardigan here. So this is my center front pant and the very, very front. This, these are the front here of the cardigan. And I started taking this apart and it's gonna unravel nice uh, in one continuous uh, yarn. Uh, so when you have cardigans, don't be afraid uh, to go ahead and purchase them because you may be able to get a lot of usable yarns out of it. Now with this one, 
I also, this is my setup here. I don't know if we can see this, but this is my skein winder. And this skein winder, I have a yarn, I have a counter on it. Um, so I have my counter down at the bottom. And um, so I can go up, go straight to this from, un um, from unwinding the yarn and I'll know how much right off the bat I have for that. So let's see if I can find the beginning of this. And tie this on. So I went ahead and started this one. So, so now I'm able to just go straight from the end and wind this on. So, and this one, even with the rabbit hair in it, which I sometimes I have a hard time with that rabbit rabbit hair, um, the it being matted from washing. But this one has been well taken care of, and it's just unwinding really easy on here. So, so normally I do get um, just the pullovers, uh, so I can make sure I have but um, enough yarn. But um, with this one, I wanted to try and see. Um, so this has a nice large uh, whale and course with it. And you can see you want to make sure that this is the direction. So you start up here at the top and you want to unwind this way. You can see with your knit fabric. So, um, let's see what else do I have. Uh, this has one, unwinding sweaters, has that given you a different appreciation for knit fabric? Uh, yes, it's made it. Um, well, I, when I first started this, it was more of um, I work on a lot of other people's projects. And so I wanted to start doing something where I can then start trying to um, work on my own projects and my own art and make things for myself or family members. But I didn't want to spend a whole lot of money. So I started by, um, it was, it's a great way. I find it very relaxing to take sweaters apart. So in the evenings when I come in, if I have an hour and I'm not in the mood to knit or spin and, or I've had a really, really bad day, um, I can just start taking that sweater apart. And by the end of it, by the hour, um, I'm nice and relaxed. I've taken my aggression out on, you know, the sweater and um, now I have something usable. So this one, this is a cotton and you'll find a lot of decorations at the neckline. And this one, um, it's got the, you can see, it's got a sewn um, element here at the neck. And because of that sewn element and it's been cut here, I'm not going to be able to get this all the part. I'll use all that top. It's not gonna be usable to me for this part of the project. Now I'll take it and I can use it in other things. So I'll actually, when I take this apart and when I start, I'll take some scissors and I'll just cut along that one top course. So then I can just start below my neckline and just going, cause I know I'm not going to be able to use this top part for um, having a continuous yarn. So I'll have thread um, and another color to be able to use for something else. So when you have zippers, um, don't be afraid to get those that have the zipper in them because uh, you'll still be able to use a lot of the other yarns. That's why it's great going and working in the men's section because you get really large sweaters. And even if there's a zipper down the front, you'll still have plenty of yarn. On that one, could you start from the bottom and just work your way up to where that yoke no, is unusable? No, you have to, because knit the way it's made, you have to start at the top and work your way down. It will not, unravel, it will not unravel from the bottom up. So there is a definite direction in the way these are made and you have to follow that direction to be able to get them undone. Uh, so here's, this is the one um, that um, had a, you can see it's a cotton, has some really great designs on it. And um, I was hoping to be able to take these yarns apart, different yarns, and to use them already dyed in a different project and I already have different dyed yarns. But when I started taking these apart, 
you can see I have all these different tie-ons uh, with a supplemental weft. So I'm not sure about taking this one apart just yet. I'm not sure I'm going to want to. So here's all the supplementals you can see. Um, I may, because I like these colors and they're the person I was going to make them for, they're their colors. So I may go ahead and spend the time to take it all apart. And this one's a Ramy and a cotton, which I think is a really interesting combination, getting the nettle uh, and cotton together. Uh, so I may take the time to go ahead and unwind all the different colors, or I think this might be a really nice sweater from a dog, <laughs> just the sleeve on its own. So um, yeah, I was just thinking if I couldn't take that apart, I would probably just flip it over and sew it and make a bag or a scarf or something out of it. Yeah, it may, it may become something else. So, um, and not one of my sweaters uh, that I take apart. So this one, the, the label, you can see here. Um, so we have Harold, it's a 57% silk, 33% nylon and 4% Angora rabbit hair and 4% wool and 2% cashmere. And it's made in China. So it's a really interesting fiber content. Um, I'll be, it has a nice seam here, so I'll be able to take apart there. The side seams are good. My only concern is this seam here with all this fringe detail. So I may, because this fringe, the way it's put on here, it, the ends may be cut, so I may not be able to just completely unravel. This one, I may have to go down to the bottom of the V, cut everything off and start from there. So, but this is a really unique combination of, of fibers with that. So I'll have to start playing with that one and see how that one comes off. Uh, so, um, so winding off, we talked about winding it into a ball using a tabletop or um, ball or the skein winder. And uh, so things that I have encountered with these sweaters, um, I have found nylon at the cuffs, which, um, so here's one that I started unraveling and uh, what I have found with this one, let's see, where's the fiber content here? So this is a 75% silk, 13% cashmere, 11% nylon, and 1% lycra. And um, when I unraveled these um, into balls, what I found was that this, here's my spandex. So you can see my spandex here, and then this is the fiber content of everything else. So I don't want spandex in my projects. It's not something that I would need. So when I unravel this, I'm actually gonna remove this thread and this, will become either a waste fiber or maybe I can use it in something else for stuffing or um, I don't know, come up with a different project of it. But I have another bag where I keep this kind of stuff. So, um, but I thought this was a really pretty yarn. Um, I'm gonna wanna keep it in this color, but um, to, for me to be able to use this in a new project, I'll definitely wanna remove that one uh, stay. And that's going to take a lot to do, so hence my back. Uh, let's see. We talked about the two threads being held together when you're unraveling it. Um, side seams that are sewn in random places. Uh, I have found sewing side seams, uh, seams that are sewn not only on our labels here, but in just various other places. Uh, I think it's where a yarn was tied on because uh, they ended up, they were at the end of the skein, so new yarn was tied on and they wanted to make sure it didn't unravel there. So we have a sewn seam, uh, all kinds of additional knit pieces and yarns added to things uh, that don't show up in the weave. Uh, but they're, they're always a challenge in the sweaters. They don't always come apart like I think they would. So we talked about this one. Uh, with the um, all the supplementals on it and how it might be difficult. And this one uh, had up at the top, it has a surge seam. 
which I didn't notice because normally when I go and I look at my sweaters, so I'm looking at size, I'm looking at label, which is at the neck, and then I'll go to the label that is most of the time there's one at the side seam. And I look at my side seam as if to make sure that it's not a sewn side seam, that it's a chain, has the chain so that I'm able to take it apart. As uh, if it has that side seam that is surged, uh, you're not going to be able to take that one apart properly. Uh, so you want to just avoid those. So finishing. So we're winding, we can wind it off into a ball. Um, I wind my off into skeins because then I resell it. Uh, and um, I, before I wind it off into the skein, I put my label on it. I do not do any other finishing to this. I leave this up to the person that is going to purchase this for them to either uh, re to wash it again and dry it uh, weighted so that you can maybe relax some of the crimp or perhaps steam it if you have a handheld steamer. Uh, I've done that before to relax the crimp on it, but I leave that up to whoever's buying it. Is Some people like to knit with the crimp on there or they want to, um, then they want to go ahead and rewash it uh, to relax the crimp. So, um, Let's see, what else have, do we have here? So I have this one. Uh, I've not tried taking this apart. Uh, this one has, a, it's 77% acrylic, 13% nylon, 10% metallic fiber. And I got this one because I wanted to do something sparkly at the holiday with a gift. I, I went with a different direction, but um, it's, uh, it is a synthetic, but it looks like it's going to come off in just all kinds of really great uh, pieces. And then I've got something that has a little sparkle in it. So that's why I purchased this one. It has a hood. So here's all kind of extra yarn. Um, the hood is seamed. So I don't know if you can see. Can you see that? Cro I don't know if you can see that crochet chain. You can't there, quite but... see that. And we have a question about can you show a chained seam again? I'm not totally sure what the question is but they I think asked they're wanting to see what that looks like let me see um let's see if we can do this one so this is a cotton from dress barn um i don't know so here's our label and then here is the so if you oh, so if you pull, whoops, did you go away? Okay, we're back. That pole came up. Um, okay, so I don't know. Uh, I think it's not liking seeing this, but there's the chain right here. So when you pull back a that, tiny bit, we can see it pretty well. So right there. So if we go back on the PowerPoint here on this page, you can see that center black, it's the chain and the whale in the center that has highlighted in black. That's what this looks like. And you wanna make sure that the loops are at the top and that you start up here and you unravel this way. Now, normally um, this will be the direction it goes. So you'll unravel from the center arm all the way down. Sometimes they go the other direction. So you just have to look. So I don't know if you can see, I don't think that's gonna show up. I think my lighting, it's not gonna show up. But I'll, um, what I'm planning on doing is to emailing all the participants copy of uh, this PowerPoint with all these questions um, answered and with some better pictures for this so you can see. Um, see some of this kind of stuff so let's see what else do we so i think that will help somebody wanted to see the finishing steps again so i think maybe having the powerpoint will help and then we're so you mean this so finishing off here into the skein i think so that's what she meant okay so this is um so skein this off on my tabletop one and so this is my label and i added the label from the sweater and then I just marked again, it'll have, um, I'll go and weigh this in ounces, put how many yards I have on it. If there were any tie-ons, I'll note those as well. Uh, and then when I resell these, you can see here, this is, 
So this is cotton. So we have our two sleeves and the front and the back. So each of these are labeled. Uh, there weren't any tie-ons because it was one full, I was able to get these off in continuous piece. So I have cotton. There was 385 in this one skein. That's yards, 385 yards. It weighed 2.54 ounces for this one skein. So the, I sell these as lots, so all four of these skeins, um, list them together as, as one. Uh, let's see, so this is a 55% linen, 45% cotton. Uh, this one here on my left is 383 yards, uh, 9.81 ounces, and it had three tie-ons. So the second skein with it, where here's my, my labels attached, the original, the sweater labels attached to my label, and it was 377 yards, 9.52 ounces, and two tie-ons. So that's how that one came apart. So, um, when I'm going to looking at sweaters uh, at my second chance store, uh, so look at size, you wanna look at fiber content. That's really important to me. Um, I have a bit of um, uh, a sensitivity to animal fibers, uh, hence why I like cotton and hemp. <laughs> and then um, construction, really important. You wanna make sure that these are uh, made in a way that you can then take them apart to be able to get um, as much yardage as you can. Now, I think this cotton, even though it's a cardigan, I think I'm gonna be able to get this um, unraveled pretty easy. But I may not want to do that because this cotton has been washed a lot and you can see it's pilled. Um, it has a lot of pilling on it. And so it may not be worth um, taking this apart. I may take it apart because I want cotton for a different project. I could take it apart, over dye it, and use it, mixed it with something else for a different project. And, and then um, all that pilling won't matter for it. Uh, but same thing with wool. You have to make sure when you look at them that the sweaters have not been, uh, that they've been cared for correctly and they've not been uh, uh, fells in the washing machine because once you have the wool and it's shrunk and it's matted you're not going to be able to easily take those apart so um let's see what else so while while you're winding that up we did a poll on things people might be um interested in and with 22 percent of the folks were interested in spinning hemp 17 okay. in spinning cotton and 61 percent in natural dyeing so Couple of things. Um, Melanie's going to be posting a spinning hemp um, workshop, um, so keep your eyes open for that. Probably sometime the, in March. Probably in March. The mm -hmm. Fiber Artist Market website. We produce a digital magazine um, monthly, and it's free. Um, it, it comes to you in your email, and you can flip through it like any magazine. In February is going to be our cotton hemp and bast issue and Melanie has done a couple of um, articles as have some of our other cotton folks and Acadian Brown Cotton um, has an article so um, it's always worth taking a look at that these are these are real articles by real people we don't have um, you know the most um, expert expert of the world necessarily but they're real people who are doing it and then natural dyeing um, will our April, sorry, I'm having to look. Yes, April will be our natural dyeing magazine. And um, we'll be working with a company called Botanical Dyes and Amy uh, Defer, who is one of the fiber shed dyers. Um, so uh, we really encourage you to uh, come and sign up. I promise not to uh, send a lot of uh, spam to you because I'm the one who sends stuff out and I don't have time to send you a lot of spam. So um, please, um, and then look for Melanie's workshops and check out her store as well. And you have, um, and so I have everyone's email address that signed up for this and I will send this uh, PowerPoint out uh, shortly. Um, so you can have copies of this. If you have any other questions, please feel free to email me or call me. Um, if I'm in the studio, I can answer the phone, uh, we can chat. Uh, so I, I enjoy chatting about all of uh, the fibers and the yarns. 
Well, that's what my background is. That's what I've been studying for the past 30 years. So um, come and chat with me. So, and thank you to Mary for allowing me to host this on the Fiber Artist Market. Uh, so oh, you bet, it. Melanie. We love it. This is uh, hopefully just one of, of many that we'll do. And thank you for taking your time. Thanks, everybody, for coming in with us. And I, I'm going to put in a little bit of a plug. February 13th is our live Facebook sale. And um, some of our farmers will have some of their new fleeces that have just been sheared. And always our artists have some fascinating stuff. So Fiber Artist Market uh, Facebook page um, will be right there live and you can come, come take a look. So thanks, Melanie, appreciate it. Thank you for everyone attending. Alrighty, bye-bye.